So the essentially, which started as a distributed uh, medium, is now has the danger of being converted into a centralized agency. And in fact, the, the recent uh, trade agreements that are happening, particularly referring to the ACTA uh, regulations that are being imposed, or people are trying to mend all the countries to accept some of these regulations is one of the case in point. So this kind of a distributed medium is now has the danger of uh, being subverted into uh, the medium of uh, power politics. And one glaring example of that, uh, which is not new, is the spectrum politics. Uh, I mean, this is possibly a very good example because uh, in India we understood how important was Sarik Satyagraha and how it managed to generate enormous amount of opinion in the country uh, because uh, the water is belongs to the nature, the sun is transforming that salt water into salt, I mean, the water, salt, and then we are consuming it, and then somebody else is taking the tax. So that message actually is the time when people understood the meaning of freedom of the production. Of course, uh, the textile the example of Khadi was no less uh, a good example, but all these are wonderful examples which Gandhi managed to articulate so well. But now, spectrum is today's example. The electromagnetic radiation is out there in nature, but then it is sold and licensed uh, by, to the companies by the governments all over the world. And this I would call the best example of how mafia is ruling uh, and how is the science and technology uh, productions and the technology have been actually been given to the people uh, uh, outside. I mean, this is uh, possibly a great, good example and how the trade agreements are uh, being negotiated <coughs> in this space. I'm trying to, so I think we have a big challenge to break this nexus and without which uh, we have problems. So the, the free software movement does have problems of this kind. Suppose if we actually use a distributed internet, a peer-to-peer -peer internet, uh, we're not allowed to do so because they say it is illegal. And in fact, all the firewalls all over the world actually stop the peer-to-peer -peer communications that happen between the machines. Uh, so we have no right to communicate directly between my mobile phone and your mobile phone. And they say that ISP is technically required, but it is nonsense. We don't need ISPs to control our communications. We could actually be capable of you know, using our uh, computers and modems and mobile phones that we have because they are both receivers as well as transmitters and we actually don't need uh, any regulating force in this place. So these are good examples of how the government is actually trying to convert this distributed space into a controlled space. And so these are uh, some of the glaring examples. So I would end my uh, intervention with one important aspect which we're trying to bring in uh, as a part of uh, this thing, which is uh, this example that I gave is a context of production. So we produced an operating system, we produced an encyclopedia, we're producing a uh, lot of other technologies based on uh, these principles of copyleft. And we are also now trying to articulate this to a very important space of education. If these manifestos don't address this education space explicitly, it will be a very important uh, lacuna. So we have to somehow bridge this. I mean, as an educationist working at TIFR, and this is one of my areas that I want to intervene uh, more strongly. And so we are articulating uh, a production as a context for education. I think uh, in the morning, Anil Gupta has given wonderful examples, a number of contexts of you know how production <coughs> contexts can actually become very important uh, interventions in which education can actually happen. So, so this is. Uh, a kind of a place where the existing consumer-oriented education to a production-oriented education, where the students are supposed to be producing and creating a knowledge rather than uh, just, you know, being used as, you know, consumers just waiting to be filled in as a containers. So the connection, of course, between the sustainable development model as well as education is so straightforward. Because uh, unless the means of production are taught, the, the skills of means and production are taught during the school, 
uh, and during the college period, uh, we cannot produce a sustainable uh, society. And this important aspect must be uh, underlined in any kind of manifesto without which we would be uh, missing out uh, quite a lot. Uh, the last point that I want to say is uh, a very current uh, aspect where we are really trying to generate enormous amount of opinion is the abuse of ICT. And since I'm talking about uh, the ICT uh, and one of the glaring examples of the Indian government's use, sorry, abuse of ICT is the UID project, where they're trying to make the government powerful instead of making the people powerful. And this is, uh, and I'm trying to create a kind of a centralized database without having any legal protection to uh, the data because we have not legislated anything to do with data protection in this country. Uh, whether it is other kinds of e-governance projects or this particular project, because in the name of NREGA, in the name of various other, you know, uh, food distribution processes and things like that, they're, they're, they're trying to create a kind of a uh, tyrannical power uh, kind of a regime, uh, which is uh, uh, is a glaringly opposite example of how we have used ICT for bringing out the production context. Uh, and creating creative commons and how the government is trying to use ICT, the same technology, for creating uh, larger power structures to uh, sort of, uh, you know, in the name of governance and in the name of distributing resources. I think, uh, so these are uh, important things. So I would just leave three references at the end to read more about uh, what we are talking about. So uh, one place where uh, much of these things that I talked about have been articulated, so there is a a uh, group called Free Culture Forum, FC Forum. It's an international body which meets every year in Barcelona. Um, this time it's going to be in October, uh, where this is the third year uh, we're going to meet and discuss the issues related to this. And uh, please do read the, the sustainable creative commons and how it is uh, supposed to be understood and uh, managed and distributed. Uh, and that is one of the references that I want to be the, the, the second uh, difference that I want to leave is to call the Tiruvananthapuram Declaration. So if you go and to the net and uh, search for Tiruvananthapuram Declaration, which was made in 2004 as a free software, a free society conference. Uh, and that uh, defines a kind of a knowledge manifesto. Uh, uh, as it's a very short document, but as a very telling uh, uh, <coughs> to make. And the third reference is my own project in education called the metastudio.org. So these will give you some kind of an idea of how uh, the, the free software philosophy could actually impact education and development and produce uh, creative commons, a sustainable creative commons. Uh, thank you. Thank you.